Hello everyone, I'm Henry from the GMBN Tech Channel. Today we're going to be talking about brakes and why your e-bike might require something a little bit different. Now, when we talk about e-bikes, the first thing, the big difference in terms of braking, is that weight isn't such a factor. This is a byproduct of having the engine room of the Titanic bolted to your downtube. But of course, the knock-on consequence of all this extra power is of course extra weight. So gram counting with your brakes doesn't make much sense. Now, when we want to maximize our brakes, the first port of call, if you'll excuse the pun, is the rotor size. Now, there is kind of a conversation around rotor size, and some people feel that a larger rotor means you compromise on modulation, but I'm gonna get back onto this later on. I would go on to say that larger rotors are really important on e-bikes, especially when you factor in 29ers, big heavy duty tires, and maybe even tire inserts. You may have noticed e-bike specific brakes. And what does that actually mean? Well, normally it's a standard trail lever paired up with a downhill caliper. Now a downhill caliper is maybe even four pots, which means four pistons working. That means that the pads are bigger. So there's more contact with the rotor, which dissipates heat better. There's kind of a conversation around that. Is it e-bike specific? Well, not really, but you do certainly want to have powerful brakes. But I would say having a set of downhill brakes would arguably cope with the heat even better. There are two main types of brake pad, sintered, which is sometimes called metal, and resin, which is often referred to as organic. Now with your sintered, they're harder wearing, but perhaps don't provide such good initial bite or feel. The organic or resin ones, they do provide that bite, but they don't like being dragged. And in wet conditions, you'd be amazed at how short, short their lifespan can be. And surprise, surprise, both pads hate it when you drag them, but they respond in different ways. The main enemy in terms of sintered is actually glazing. Now a donut connoisseur like myself will tell you, this is where the top surface responds to heat by coming quite shiny. That shiny surface then vibrates on the rotor, which then grips less and produces heat or even noise, but it's not actually braking efficiently. Organic pads can glaze too, but they tend to wear. Their rate of wear is quick enough that it doesn't seem to factor so much. If your pads are glazed over, the thing to do is either rub them lightly with some sandpaper, or you can splash some water on your pads and rub them together. This takes off the top surface, which is normally a visible shine. So once that's gone away, you're all good to go. Personally, I prefer the feel of organic pads over the durability of sintered. Now, it's an often misunderstood and a thorny subject. And before I get into the details of it, I would require a degree in international diplomacy as well as a very strong cup of tea. But why not try them both yourself and then you can decide which is better for you. Now, if your brakes are what we call contaminated, which means that some foreign substance has got on your braking system at some point, that often means they are done. You will hear about your mate's best friend who says if you leave them in some muck off overnight or whatever, it will decontaminate them. It will not. Setting, on them, setting them on fire will not decontaminate them. Just don't be a cheapskate. Buy some new pads. Don't mess around with it. Um, often you won't find your brakes aren't really working until you really need your brakes. So don't even get involved in that. Just buy some new pads. To optimize your braking, you want your caliper to be nicely centered and all the pistons working evenly on the rotor. Now you can do this by balancing them out with a screwdriver and helping achieve a balanced caliper that way. Now, as you can see with this bike here, the brake is dragging quite badly. So what it needs is it needs this caliper realigning. Really simple, we have these two bolts here that we're just going to undo. So we use this center line here to get the alignment just right. Now, as you can see with this caliper, the pistons are quite nicely balanced. Everything's out you know, roughly evenly. So we're just gonna nip that up just as so. Give it a quick spin. Now, sometimes there's a small bit of ticking which isn't really that much to worry about. Often the tolerance of the rotor isn't quite 
as tight as it as it could be. It, you know, it reacts to heat and things like that. Just get it nicely centered, and that looks really good. Once it's all good, we do just torque that up. Make sure you're happy. And aligning a caliper really is as simple as that. But if you've got one piston that is too active, you can get a very small flathead screwdriver and just tease them back. And the next time you pull the lever, it gives the other pistons a head start. I did a really, really detailed video for GMBN Tech about this and how to kind of get huge amounts of power out of your brakes and it would be really, really good for e-bikers. So please do check that out. We're gonna to link to it at the end of the video. Now, from the other end of the bike is, of course, the levers. Now, how you have your levers set up is a really personal thing. I would normally have my levers pulling all the way so they touch the bar. Most people get on that and they think it's absolutely horrible, but that's just the way I like them. They normally have a reach adjust here, so that can affect how far or close the lever sits away. Now, when people begin to ride, they get into riding, often you'll see them do two finger braking. That's not how these levers are being intended to run. Whether you have one or two fingers at the brake, it's not gonna affect how much power there is at the caliper. What it is gonna affect is your grip on the handlebar. This is a very weak, weak grip with a lot of work to do for these two remaining fingers. This, however, is a really powerful grip. And also having your finger in this hook of the lever blade gets the most leverage and is the most powerful way to have them, really. Now, the other adjustment we have at our levers is the angle at which the blade sits. Now, I want you to think about the bigger picture here. I'm not saying there's a right or there's a wrong, and it is personal preference, but you'd be amazed at how much your levers can dictate your body position. Imagine if I have my levers really far down. Suddenly it's gonna be my wrist forward, which brings my forearms forward, and changes my whole body position entirely than if I had them very flat. Like I said, it's a personal thing, but don't be afraid to experiment and find out what works best for you. Like I said earlier on, there are many contributing factors to why brakes may or may not be working as you'd like. Often, people blame these large rotors as a lack of modulation. That's the difference between when you start applying, applying the pressure in the lever before the wheel locks up. Sometimes we talk about it as feel, but it's kind of a, a mistruth really. It's not something I really subscribe to. I think often, the culprit for that wheel locking up is shallow tread. It's, you know, yeah, poor tires. More often than not though, the elephant in the room, it's poor braking technique and bad body position. Even if you have the best brakes in the world with the most amazing modulation, if you can't generate grip into your tires with your body weight, then your brakes haven't got a chance. Also, if you're just grabbing fistfuls, yeah, again, you know, the brake isn't capable of magic. It is only limited by the grip of the tire. Now, hopefully we have a better understanding of why e-bikes require something a little bit different from their brakes. Now, if you wanna see that really in-depth caliper balancing I did for GMBN Tech, click here.